The morning is cloudy, but it isn't raining. So you grab your bag and head off to work. You're halfway there when it starts drizzling. Then raining. Then pouring. There's only one thought in your head as you're dashing through wet streets towards your office building. If only I could hop in a time machine and go back in time, I'd have put that umbrella in my bag. Unfortunately, going back in time is not possible. But guess what? We still managed to travel in time. But let's start from the very beginning. More than a hundred years ago, a famous scientist called Albert Einstein, I bet you've seen his most popular photo, came up with a theory about how time works. He gave it a nice little scientific name, the theory of relativity. According to it, space and time are linked together. Another point is that our universe has a set speed limit. Nothing can move faster than the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. Okay, you may say, but what does it have to do with time travel? Well, the theory of relativity also claims that the faster you move, the slower you experience time. And several experiments prove this to be true. For example, let's say you have two clocks set to the exact same time. You leave one clock at home and take another one with you while traveling by plane. What's important here is the fact that the plane is going in the same direction as Earth. After your plane finishes its flight around the world, you can compare the time on the two clocks. You find out that the clock that traveled with you is a bit behind the clock that remained on the ground. Because of this, GPS clocks are corrected. GPS satellites travel around our planet at tremendous speeds, around 8,700 miles per hour, and more than 12,000 miles above the surface of Earth. This speed slows GPS satellite clocks down, but the altitude speeds them up. As a result, the clocks on GPS satellites experience time at a rate that is slightly faster than one second per second. And if this difference in time wasn't corrected, you wouldn't be able to use GPS to figure out your exact location. In any case, this is probably the closest thing we have to time travel. You see, our planet is constantly moving around the sun at an average speed of 67,000 miles per hour. The sun, along with the entire solar system, is, in turn, circling the center of our home Milky Way galaxy at a staggering 140 miles per second. And the Milky Way itself is also moving. It's spinning at a speed of 130 miles per second. Those are some really dizzying numbers. And now, imagine that in order to get to the past, all this space matter must also turn back and return to its original position. Just admit it, it's absolutely impossible. By the way, even though we can't exactly travel back in time, we can look at the past, thanks to NASA's space telescopes. They help us see stars and galaxies that are insanely far away. It takes the light coming from them ages to reach Earth. That's why when you observe those distant worlds, you see what they looked like a long time ago. Now, what if time travel was somehow possible? Wouldn't all the fun be spoiled by the time travel paradox? You know, like finding yourself in the past and accidentally preventing your parents from meeting each other? The problem is that Einstein's theory of general relativity theoretically allows a person to travel back in time and come in contact with their past self which can potentially endanger their existence. But you can breathe out. Some scientists at the University of Queensland have recently claimed that this paradox might not actually exist. They say that even if you made some changes in the past, the timeline would self-correct anyway. In other words, it would still ensure that whatever event sent you back in time would still happen. One more study claims that even if some changes happened in the past, they wouldn't drastically alter the future. You know how Stephen Hawking said, the best evidence we have that time travel is not possible and never will be, is that we have not been invaded by hordes of tourists from the future. But what if these tourists come to our time, but they do it secretly? You may even have met one of them. Let's see the most famous time travelers. 
Meet Orin. He's a cyborg who came to us from the year 2050 to stop the coming end of the world. In 2020, he appeared on a TV show where he said the whole world was inside the Matrix. Then he hit the headlines and gave an interview to a popular YouTube channel. As proof that he's a cyborg, he demonstrated his robotic voice, which can be made in a simple computer program. He also called himself We because he declared himself a collective consciousness that had come to save humanity. Oren became famous for his predictions about the near future, but it turned out that many experts had already announced these forecasts earlier. He also said that a huge corporation was suppressing humanity and we were inside a complex computer simulation. If we don't improve or care for each other and nature, the end will begin in 2050. Oren no longer appears on major shows, but he has a small fan base of people who love all sorts of fantastic theories. Another time traveler is Adam Archon, who came to us from 2045. There was an interview with him on YouTube where he shared some details about the future of the US, after which the video went viral and hit the lines in many newspapers. Archon reported that the last official president of the country would be the daughter of Martin Luther King III, and she would become the greatest US president in history. Another exciting event that Archon announced is supposed to happen in 2028. He said that people would learn about the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations. He added that these creatures wouldn't come from outer space. The Traveler also noted that the world would switch to a single digital currency and all cash would disappear. Of course, no one believed him, so the experts conducted a lie detector test. And Adam Archon successfully passed it. He said that he had a chip in his hand to facilitate time travel. An extraterrestrial civilization would arrive on Earth in 2028, and in 2045, people would be closer to robots. The lie detector didn't state that Archon was lying, but this doesn't mean he told the truth, since the device can be deceived with the help of special training. In any case, in 2028, we will find out whether Archon was right or not. All these time travelers arrive in the past and, for some reason, don't use knowledge from the future. What would you do if you could go back 50 years? Perhaps you would invest money in shares of some young company that will become a big, expensive corporation. In that case, everyone would believe that you really came from the past. And by the way, one guy did it. He invested $800 in the stock exchange and made $350 million out of it. This guy's name was Andrew Carlson, and he hit a big jackpot in 2003. However, he didn't manage to enjoy a rich life because the FBI came for him. Andrew sold some stocks and bought others and did this very successfully. Thus, in a few months, he became a millionaire. The Securities Commission couldn't believe in such coincidences, so it called the FBI. During the interrogation, everyone was sure Andrew would begin to justify himself and say he was lucky. But instead, he calmly replied that he came from the year 2256 with the help of a time machine. Of course, no one took it seriously. But when the FBI started looking for information about this man, they found nothing. Andrew Carlson had no documents. He was not in any database. He just appeared out of nowhere and started making a lot of money. He was interrogated for about four hours and he behaved pretty calmly. It seemed as if he was telling the truth. However, he didn't tell them the time machine's location. When the press found out about this man, he immediately became a celebrity. Well-known news sites began to write about Andrew Carlson. Articles have appeared in Japan, Australia, Germany, the UK, and other countries. And of course, journalists started calling the FBI to find out more details about this guy. And the FBI told them that the whole story was fiction and that there was no Andrew Carlson. Information about him appeared on an internet resource known for its fake news. At some point, the article about the time traveler somehow got into Yahoo! 
where it went viral. So, as we see, all statements about time travelers are either fiction or a lie. Conversations about such travels appeared thanks to fantastic films and books. Pop culture has greatly influenced this fantastic concept and created several theories claiming that time travel is real. And some people believe that, especially those who are far from science. But what do real scientists think about this? Are such trips really possible? Let's try to find out. Scientists say, yes, time travel is real because we're now traveling in time. Time is moving forward and we're moving with it. We call it a journey. But if we need to get into the future or go back to the past, everything is much more complicated here. Remember Einstein's little theory of relativity? It says that time moves relative to the observer and has no constant value. To understand better, here's a simple example. 10 hairs on your head. Is it a lot or a little? 10 hairs in a bowl of soup. Is that a lot or a little? Everything is relative and depends on the conditions. The same thing happens with time and space. If we move at a tremendous speed, close to the speed of light, then time slows down for us. The perception of time becomes different for a person who's running and for one who's standing still. If we're near some heavy object, let's say a thousand times heavier than the sun, then the time next to this object also slows down, thanks to its strong gravity. In this sense, time travel is possible. If you're an old person and meet your friend as young as he was 50 years ago, why are you so young? Oh, I've been flying in space at a tremendous speed all this time, that's all. But this doesn't mean that this friend just sat on the ship for 50 years and didn't age. No, time was different for him. 10 years for you on Earth is a long period of time, but for him, these 10 years passed like half an hour. Gravity and speed bend time. For this reason, astronaut Scott Kelly, who spent a year and a half in orbit, became 5 milliseconds younger than his twin brother after coming to Earth. All this time Scott spent inside the ship flying in orbit at high speed, and he was also further away from the gravitational center of the planet. So, time was slower for him by 5 milliseconds than for his brother. Objectively, time always runs at the same speed, but its speed changes inside the perceptions of different observers under different conditions. That's what the theory of relativity is about. But what about jumping into the future or the past, like in movies? Wormholes will help you with this. This is something like tunnels that pass through space and time and can connect different time segments in different places in the universe. They are like cheat codes that can break the laws of the universe. Wormholes are elusive, have different sizes, are unpredictable, appear in space, and vanish. But their main problem is that wormholes only exist in theory and sci-fi and have never been noticed in our universe by scientists. Hey, my dear astronomers, last year was awesome. Two total lunar eclipses, a breathtaking ring of fire solar eclipse, and a rare alignment of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. I bet you've been wondering what space wonders this year is going to bring us. Well, let's find out. From April 15th to April 29th, you'll be able to enjoy the Lyrid meteor shower. Meteor showers happen when our planet passes through debris left behind by comets and asteroids. That's why such showers normally occur approximately at the same time every year. The Lyrid meteor shower is produced by a comet called Thatcher. It takes around 415 years to orbit the Sun. By the way, this meteor shower is one of the oldest. People started watching it in 687 BCE. This year, the peak of the meteor shower will fall on the night of April 22nd, with almost 20 meteors per hour dashing across the dark sky. But if you miss the Lyrid meteor shower, don't worry. You can still see Eta Aquarid meteors from April 15th to May 27th. This meteor shower is famous for its fast meteors, leaving long, glowing trails. This shower is produced by the comet Halley, completing its orbit around the Sun every 76 years. 
Unfortunately, the full moon that will appear on May 5th might outshine most of the meteors, but astronomers promise it'll still be a pretty impressive show. Throughout all of June, Venus and Mars will be on the same astronomical line, looking as if they've been grouped together. And on the first official day of summer, Venus, Mars, and the Moon will form a triangle. You might even see the trio without any special equipment, since they'll be shining extremely brightly. And another meteor shower will start in July and last till September. It's called the Perseid meteor shower, and it's promised to be one of the best of the year. Bright and frequent, these meteors will have long tails and will light up the sky at a rate of 50 to 100 meteors per hour. The shower will peak when Earth moves through the densest region of space debris left behind by the comet Swift-Tuttle. On August 31st, you might notice that the full moon seems to be larger and brighter than usual. This phenomenon is called a supermoon. The moon, which follows an elliptical orbit, will be the closest to Earth. Even better, this year there will be four supermoons on July 3rd, August 1st, August 31st, and September 29th. And since there are two full moons in August, the second one is called a blue moon. It occurs every 2.5 years. On October 14th, people in the southwestern USA will be able to enjoy an annular solar eclipse. Now, look, solar eclipses happen when the moon passes between Earth and the sun. But this year, the moon won't cover the sun completely. That's why a dazzling glowing circle around the moon will be visible from certain places. This eclipse will be quite short. It'll last for around five minutes. On October 28th, we'll also see a lunar eclipse, but partial. The thing is, a total lunar eclipse happens when the Earth's shadow covers the entire surface of the moon. But this time, the moon will pass through our planet's dark shadow only partly. By the way, there is one more type of lunar eclipse called a penumbral. It occurs when Earth's faint outer shadow, called penumbra, obscures the moon. And finally, we'll see another meteor shower from November 19th to December 24th. It's called the Geminid meteor shower. This one is one more fan favorite. Super fast meteors travel at a speed of up to 78,000 miles per hour. Another unique thing about this phenomenon is that the Geminids come not from an icy comet, but from a rocky space body, an asteroid. Astronomers still aren't sure how the asteroid named Phaethon produces meteor showers. There's a theory that it might actually be a comet that once lost its icy shell. Interestingly, Phaethon measures a mere three miles across. This is surprising because the amount of debris it leaves behind is truly impressive. Anyway, the peak of this meteor shower is expected on the nights of December 13th and 14th when stargazers will see up to 120 meteors per hour. The universe is three-dimensional. Okay. No, the universe is four-dimensional. Three dimensions for space and one for time. Okay, duh, what are you talking about? The universe has nine dimensions. Uh, okay. Come on, guys. The universe is flat. Wait, what? However strange it may sound, all these statements are kind of true. How come? The theory of general relativity allows for the universe to take one of three forms. It can be flat, like a sheet of paper. It can be completely closed, like a sphere. Or it can be shaped like a horse's saddle. It's very important to figure out the shape of the universe. This way, we can learn about its past and future. It can answer crucial questions. Is the universe going to expand forever, or will it eventually collapse? Is it finite or infinite? Here, we need to consider two factors, the density of the universe and the rate of its expansion. Now, hear me out. About 68% of the universe is dark energy, 27% is dark matter, and the remainder is normal matter. That's what stars, planets, and our bodies are made of. And when we speak about the universe's density, we mean the amount of matter 
packed into a given volume of space. And the density of the universe is so great that its gravity is more powerful than the force of its expansion. Then the universe will curl into a sphere. This is what we call the closed model. The coolest thing about such a universe, even though it is finite, it has no bounds. However paradoxical it may sound, if you found yourself in this universe, you would travel its space forever without falling over an edge or hitting a wall. But if the density of the universe was low, it would be unable to stop its expansion. In this case, space will warp in the opposite direction, creating an open universe shaped like a saddle. But the most popular theory, and the most bizarre sounding one, is that the universe is flat. It might be possible if its density is just right, and it expands in every direction without curving negatively or positively. Scientists claim that it's the most plausible scenario, by the way. So, if you're disappointed by our planet's roundness, the flat universe might come as some consolation. But what does a flat universe mean? I mean, our 3D world seems very real. Can it be just an illusion? Nah. The flatness of the universe isn't that two-dimensional flatness you might be imagining right now. To help you understand this concept better, I'll tell you this. In a flat universe, two rockets flying next to each other will always remain parallel. In a closed universe, their paths will diverge, and they will follow the curvature of space and eventually make a loop and meet where they started. And in an open universe, these rockets will separate and never come across each other again. Of course, it'll take a lot of time to prove that the universe is indeed flat. But so far, astronomers don't have even the slightest reason to doubt this theory. All the data they have is consistent with this flatness. For example, the imprints left on galaxies from sound waves that occurred right after the Big Bang also support this theory. In other words, right now, scientists agree that the universe we live in is like a three-dimensional sheet of paper. Good luck trying to imagine this. But if this idea is wrong and the universe is actually curved, it must be ginormous. Because those 93 billion light years we can observe aren't a large enough portion to let us see even a tiny curvature. So it might be wrong to say the universe is flat. It's probably better to announce that the little bit of the universe we see is flat. 